Okay. Okay. Hello, guys. Good morning. So we are going to continue the chart 16 with the feature interactions. Most of the relationships between features and some response variables are complex and include interactions. But identifying on the, and understanding the natural, this interaction can be a challenge. But a number of recent empirical studies has shown that interaction can be undercovered by flexible models. And this is a really good concept that was in the book, was in the Fission Engineering book of Mascom. Two or more predictors are said to interrupt if the combined effect is different than the than the than what would expect it were up uh, to impact on each other effect when considered alone. And they explain a really good example of what is uh, the water in, in some agricultures. I, I don't know how to say a bono. <laughs> I really, but I don't remember how to say that. Well, and sometimes uh, just with water, maybe you will have some. Uh, some products, but you add some some extra products, you can increase your production. So that would be an interaction. The interaction is strange is a measure how much the variation of a predicted outcome depends on interaction of the feature using a partial dependent variables for the feature of interest. So if we have zero, there is no interaction at all. If you have one, uh, you all the variables depend on the interactions. When we explore the interaction, this is the the algorithm. So for every predictor, we will estimate the value of the original model. Then we use a partial plot uh, for for the dependent variable, and we also create another partial plot for all variables, screen the 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 variable that we are studying. Then we calculate our predictions based on the both partial plots, calculate the variance of the original predictions, and and now we get the row uh, for, for this variable. There's one feature against all other features. And the other way to calculate is you take two pairs of, of features. So it's a two-way comparison. So we have the, the, the variable A, I, and the J1 and we end with this formula. So this is the depending of both. So it depends of the, the, the partial plot of J and J. And here we just were taking out the, the individual ones. Let's say the variance and also create the row. So that this is a very important metric because this work for any any machine model. And yeah, the problem with this is yeah, it's computing expensive. You will have to have some time to, to run it. And the implementation you can find them in the IML package. So you use the interaction function and create a new instance. And yeah, and in the result you will see. How is the interactions? We see that the higher infer infer this is for this variable we have the higher interaction, and we also can plot the, the, the same thing. And then we can use the two features interaction. So we just we we can use the same function. We just need to specify which feature we want to explore. Uh, this was the feature that 
has more interactions, uh, the book say, ah, let's explore that one first. And yeah, we can see the, the values are really low. So it's not like there is a big interaction for this data set. Interactions and respond variable relations. By applying by applying attention to the slow uh, difference, we can say that. So to to understand uh, the if there is an interaction, they create a partial plot with the two main features. That was the row was zero point fourteen. And they pay attention most to the slopes of these schools. So they say, hey, if the overall quality is good, you will see that the slope uh, we increase the 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 edge variable, the slope goes slower. It's like the the, the slope goes lower. But and they also notice that from this part to this point for very good, yeah, the, the, the slope is really high. And there, there is a difference in the slope for excellent and very excellent also. So basically, as the slope changes uh, between categories, as we change the edge feature, we said that there is some interaction between these both features. And that's what they explain here, basically. And despite the H statistic, there are also the PDP based variable importance measure that is available in this function of the bit package. But also, in the feature engineering book, the chapter seven has very good explanation on how we can find interactions. So the first and the best way to find interaction is maybe with expert selected interactions. So if you have domain knowledge of the process that you are, or your data is about, maybe some expert in the data could ask you, oh, maybe you should see an interaction between this process because we do this together. And the maybe interaction of high level, like interaction of three, four, five variables together. Uh, yeah, are just plausible if it expert asks you about it. The other approach is the brute force. So you you will just go and simple uh, try all the interactions. So if your data is small or moderative, you can do it. But you know that sometimes you will have a fault positives because you are evaluating too many too many models. That's maybe the concern with that approach. And here we have the 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 two stage modeling and guiding principles. So you start with a model that doesn't account interaction effects, like a linear model without any interaction. Then uh, you would just take in account the, in consideration the 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 variables that were significant to take one of these strategy. The strong strategy requires that for interaction to be considered in a model, all lower level predicting terms must be uh, explain significant amount of response variation. And the width by uh, width heredity relates to the, the requirement, it will consider any possible interaction with a significant factor. So basically, if we first have a model and the X1 was significant for that model. Ah, we go, we would check and evaluate in a second model if the X1 plus S2 and X1 plus 3 would be significant in the width heredity because only X1 was significant. 
in the strong as just one variable significant, we wouldn't even check the other ones. Why we are making this assumption? That's basically because it's really a weird to find high level interactions and three level in three way, three, three level interaction are even hard to interpret and we don't have too much. <laughs> Yeah, I really have to interpret and you have less possibility to find them. So uh, for this part of the book, yeah, and also for a book, the two-way interaction is the one that we are focusing. The only way that we go beyond the two-way is we have some domain knowledge about it. It's basically the, the, the approach that we have. The other one that is, was, really impressive to know is the three base methods and basically what they explain that in the way that trees are constructed they are really good to find interaction it's like the whole tree is a whole interaction between features so three i thought to find it so every time that they make a sequence of nodes yeah there is an interaction there and we can see it here with an example. For example, they they provide the 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 output of no four. Oh, the value that we are reporting for no four is this. Is the two of fours of the sentence, two of fours of this sentence, and two of four. So if you don't match the condition between S1 and S2 you won't get that prediction. So it's already um, like, you know, uh, interesting way to see the interaction. And you will see that all the nodes repeat that interaction many times. So you have X1 depend on F2, X1 again, X1, X2, X2. So yeah, we can see that there is some interaction between features. And how we can take advantage of this. So you will start training a tree-based model. So this is a simple one, but it also works for baggage or random forest. So it's a tree, yeah, you can find interactions. Then you can get the, the predictor's importance. Using most important predictors to validate two-way interactions, you see partial dependent plots or simple model like linear regressions. As three base method, we use predictors involved in important interaction multiple times through multiple trees to encode the relationship with the response. So basically the importance is, is a really good way to find interactions because uh, if the interaction are important, they will repeat that interaction many times in all the trees that they will create. And now that we understand what is an interaction, let's go now to the line, local in interpretable model and no explanation. It's an algorithm that helps to explain individual predictions, uh, which assumes that very complex model is linear at local scale. And here I found these three good pictures, like, oh, we have a classification that is nonlinear, but if we just see a little, a little part, we see that we can trace a little bit of, of red or a straight line here. That, that's basically the, the idea. So what are the steps? We, as, we mutate, mutate your training data to create new data points that are similar to original ones, but some change in the feature values. Compute a proximity measure, one minute distance, between the observation of interest and each permutated observation. Apply yeah, the the uh, the proximity measure is really important. It's like it's a concept from unsupervised learning most of the time. 
Uh, or Kenner's neighbors also use it a lot. Uh, the Euclidean distance, the Manhattan distance. There are some options to, to make that. So the, the basically we need a distance between one observation and another observation. Applying the selected machine learning model to predict outcomes of permuted data. Select a number of features to better describe predicted outcomes. Fit a simple model lasso, for example, to permute the data. To the permuted data, explaining the complex model outcome with n features from the permuted data weighted by its similarity to the original observation. Use the resulting feature way to explain the the local behavior. So, what we are trying to do is basically to feed a linear model or a model easy to explain for that little part. How we can do this in R? Yeah, we have several options. We have the, the IML package, the line package, the a dialects package. So the example that we with the line one. So they create explaining object with the features, the model, and the number of beans that we're going to use to make the permutations. And we can see the class is a data from explainer. It's also a list. And we can summary to see what it's containing. And then we can use the explain function with all these arguments. So we start with the observation that we want to, to study. Is in this case, we, are, we have a high and a low observation. It's like we want to know why was why we have so high price and how we have so low price. What is pointing that? Then we can add the the explained object, the number of permutations that we are going to use, uh, the distance. Here you can use any distance. Uh, this for the this function based on this function and the kernel and the number of features that we are going to use to describe uh, in the highest way and the outcomes and here we have the the results and we can see the, the explanation feed is really low for this model. And what they explain basically that we need to tune this. We need to change the parameters, uh, the, norm, the, the, the distance, they change the distance, uh, the kernel, and also the model to select. Angel, can, can you go back to that, uh, uh, to that plot? Okay. Well, uh, there. Okay. Uh, this is the one uh, that I, I think I was talking about it uh, in the previous session. Uh, this one, uh, what it says is that in that case, which is the 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 observation eighteen twenty five, which is the highest observation in the in the aims, um, those green lines, what they're saying is that they contributed positively, right? Positively to that prediction. In other words, they're pushing the prediction to a higher value. The red one, which is the utilities, okay? Is pushing the prediction to a lower value. So when you see all the, you know, all the major predictors by their weight, what you can see is most of them are saying that the price should be higher. Okay, you know, from the, of course, from, from the mean, right? In the case of 139, which is the lowest observation, you see that uh, comparing with the, with the highest observation, which is 1825, the 139, most of the features, the, the, the you know, the, 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 the most important features, they're pushing the, the, the value to the lower range, okay? 
So you can see clearly which are the features and what are the thresholds that the model is using to make that you know prediction from all the interactions of those uh, features. And this is very useful to explain why the model predicted uh, this way. <laughs> Yeah, is the, the threshold of the living area is really interesting. Exactly. For example, if we if we apply this to the attrition uh, data, uh, let's say that some of the you know most important features were uh, job role, overtime. Uh, uh, if if you are in a, in a in a specific department, so you will see that. You know, when when there's a probability that the that the person is going to leave, you will see those features and the strength of of those features reflected in that prediction. Okay. Yeah. Right. And this is, this is very useful. Uh, you know, to to explain to to a person that doesn't you know 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 the intricacies of that a model that we're using, you know, to make those predictions. Very good. Yeah, but you know maybe this is not the best one to to take in consideration because the the explanation is really low. It's like the the R square, I think, the explanation feed. So mm -hmm. after day two, right uh, now all is all is green and all is red for both, and they have a very accuracy level. Right. And, uh, I don't see, for example, utilities is not anymore here as a mm -hmm. as an important predictor. Right. So yeah, and basically at this level, for we are want to explain feature, we are really training models to explain models. That's it. So uh, maybe this is a, a new uh, yeah a new responsibility for this level because we need to also to tune this part. It's not like, ah, you're going to go straight forward and you will get the correct answer. No, you need to really validate it. Maybe I create a spell grid and, and check some some possibilities before how your final one. Um, and also I can add to validate, you know, this, you know, uh, results. Uh, you, can, you can use different methods, okay? For example, you said that we can use Lime, right? But you can use Daleks too, and you can use IML and maybe others. So if you have the time, right, you can then uh, run, you know, the, the explainers, you can run it through different algorithms and see if they converge in the same in the same features. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? And then you get a little more confidence, uh, you know, to say, okay, th these are the features that are really uh uh, the model is driving. using mm -hmm. then driving uh, this prediction. Okay. Yeah, of course. And the 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 Shabley is a good one to make that. Yeah, they have the same principle. No, no the same principle, the same outcome maybe. <laughs> this method says how the prediction changes of its possible to sell features. And then combine these changes to form a unique contribution of each feature value. So to compute the approximately contribution for feature at j to s, we need to repeat the next process several times, from ten to one hundred, or even more. If you want to be more confident for the feature observation con contribution and the results are averaged together. So we start sampling the training set. So we have a subset of the training set. Then we split both the, the subset in two parts. And we use, uh, for the V part, we create two copies of the individually sampled rows and randomize the other features. Then one copy of the one copy will include all values 
from the observation of interest for the virus from the first column feature up to including apps. So basically they are going to do is like to, to create two models uh, and like, okay, we're going to train uh, one model with these features and other one with this other. And then we are going to take the difference between these two models and at the end, take the mean of all the models. That that's maybe that's the the maybe the simplest explanation. Uh, we can use it uh, with the IMM and fast shop. We select the sample size, which observation we are interested to, to explain. In this case, they, they took the high one. And here we can see uh, the features and what, it, what was the impact of each of them. And the, the feature values that, that we were using for, for that particular one. You know, in, in this in this time, all the values are, okay, are possible because this is the highest prediction. And we can repeat the process with the explain method. For the lower observation, we can see the, the, the lower value, what are the drivers? And as we said, we can compare both both resources. They are consistent. Here the main driver is BSMT com. I don't remember I saw that before. I check really quick. Total no, it's not here. Uh -huh. Check 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 the, 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 the lower. Yeah, because here yeah, it's going. a it's a it's sorted by the absolute value. Okay, but it's negative. Okay, the weight. The weight is negative. So you, you have to compare with the lower uh you know the bottom, the bottom parameters in the in the Shapley. But I think if if you go the, back to that to that uh, plot, to that plot of the Shapley, mm -hmm. yeah, check it out. Okay, you see those lower, oh, uh, yeah. bottom features. Th those are the ones that are that are way more. Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's 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 reverse. Okay, mm -hmm. the the one in the in the line is giving you the ascending order, but by absolute value, but they're negative. Okay, mm -hmm. here. Here is you know is 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 sorting it but the reverse. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So so you get gross living area, you get the overall quality, which are the most you know impact uh, uh, features in that threshold that they are you know affecting the prediction. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. It's reverse. And. Um, the last one we're going to see is the localized statewide process. I don't really get the difference, what, but maybe this is the only one that really explain interactions. So the line and the chip ways, sharply only explain the, the main features to explain, uh, but no maybe the interactions. And the the formula that explained the book was already deprecated. So I went to the Dallas documentation and I took the sample from this page. Because yeah, the book no is an old book, yeah. Our book is a little bit old. <laughs> and they love this data of the Titanic and a random forest also. And they explain, and they use the, the explain object they created, 
with the random forest, the data, the predictions, not the prediction, the, 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 the outcome. And yeah, the, the, the creator, and they, they, they select predict parts and they select the type breakdown interactions. And that return like a data frame. When we know also see the contribution of the intercept and the, the class, the, the features, but also we see interaction. We have the bear mark in, in the frame. 25. So we see the, the impact of one interaction. That interaction is positive for, for this particular case. Uh, yeah, and maybe we can see a more detailed result using this, this approach. That is that's really interesting. You also can these also have a method that is aggregated, so you just write Write down with interactions. You also will have a a model that compares with the line in the chaplet. And maybe what I would do is to first run it as a as a breakdown first, and check if it aligns with the with the other ones. And at the end, use the interaction just to show my final result. Once I know that it's showing the the right solutions. I know how, I don't know you want to go back at some point, but yeah, that that was the the main idea of the presentation. All right. All right. Thank you. <laughs>